Hello and welcome to this tutor-led session uh, conducted by ACCA. My name is Walid and I teach financial management and advanced version of this paper at PwC's Academy in Dubai. The aim of today's session is to go over a tricky topic in financial management, which is cost of capital. And I will be focusing more on the WAC part of the cost of capital. Now, this is a frequent topic and a core topic in ACCA exam, and which is quite frequently tested in uh, the last uh, quite many years. Now, the aim here is to cover in like five to six minutes the core parts of WAC so that when you're going into the exam next, you can quickly watch this video again and refresh all your topics. Now, um, first of all, we need to understand that what is the cost of capital. If you look at that beautiful WAC formula on your formula sheets, what we can see there is that we have got a proportion of equity calculation and we multiply that with the cost of equity. We also have a proportion of debt calculation and we multiply that with the cost of debt. Now, once you add these together, you have the cost of capital. So that is the cost of raising your capital, which is equity and the debt. Now, um, the classic mistake which students make here is that they think that the calculation only is focusing on equity and debt. What they do not realize is that there are two types of equity and four types of debt. So when we think of equity, we are thinking of ordinary share capital and the preferred capital. And when we're thinking of the debt, we are thinking of the bank loans, redeemable debt, irredeemable debt, and the convertibles. So there are six sources of finance in our syllabus that we need to know. And the sad part is that the formula sheet only shows two. So what you need to do is you need to be comfortable with the calculation of these six sources of finance in terms of working out their values and working out their costs. Now, in the exam, it is not possible that the examining team is going to test you in all six because that would be too much work. So the maximum that we have seen in the past is four. So the examining team can ask us to use four sources of finance. Now, what we will need, as I just said, is to work out their values and the cost. So I'll just quickly go over the calculations part here. Um, if we are looking to calculate the value of equity on market value basis, that is simple. We take the number of shares, we multiply that with the share price. When we are looking to work out the value of preferred capital, we take the number of shares, multiply with the share price. When we are looking to calculate the value of the debt, what we do is we take the units of debt into the market price of debt. Now that is the values part and now we need to look at the cost part. Now when we think of cost of equity, there are two ways in which we can compute cost of equity. One is CAPM and the other is rearranging the growth model. CAPM is quite frequently used and it is an area which sometimes causes a little difficulty. So I'm going to come to the CAPM in a minute, but I'll just finish the other sources of finance, which are in terms of debt and the calculation of the cost. Now, when I think of the debt, as I said, there are four types of debt that can be tested. One is the bank loan and the calculation there is simple. It's simply the interest, one minus the T. When we think of the redeemable debt, and the convertible debt, which is traded, we look at the IRR calculation for them. And then when we think of the irredeemable debt, we take interest, one minus the T, over the market price of the debt. So these are all the ways in which we can compute these uh, different sources of finance. Um, and if there is any preferred capital as well, we can simply compute its cost using the fixed dividend over the market price calculation. Now, I just want to go back to the CAPM a little uh, after I've talked about these calculations um, because CAPM seems to be a little area which sometimes uh, is causing some complexity in the exam. Now the CAPM equation is simple, risk-free rate plus the equity risk premium into the beta equity. Uh, but we need to understand what is CAPM trying to do here. Well the CAPM is basically built on a portfolio theory which separates risk. Now the total risk is split into systematic and unsystematic. Now the unsystematic risk is not what we worry about in the syllabus because that can be easily diversified. So we're telling to the shareholders that you can diversify that risk yourself and what we'll focus on is the systematic risk. Now within that, we look at the business risk and the financial risk. Business risk is industry specific. Financial risk is company specific. Industry risk cannot be zero. Financial risk can be zero. So how do we measure these risks? Well, there we have the concept of beta. 
So beta is the measure of systematic risk. Now there are two types of betas that we need to know. One is the beta acid, the other is the beta equity. Beta acid has just got business risk in it, just one risk in it. And beta equity has got the business risk and the financial risk in it. So one risk is there in beta acid and two risks are there in beta equity. So when you in the exam are doing your calculations of beta acid and beta equity, please make sure that the beta equity is always more than the beta acid, simply because it has got two risks and beta acid has one risk. Now, that is on the CAPM. Just quickly, last talk, uh, the last part of this session, um, that sometimes the examining team also asks us that why the cost of equity is more than the cost of debt. So we need to know that. Now, we should all be uh, ready to say that, that yes, cost of equity is more than the cost of debt, but why is that? Well, there are many reasons of that. The first reason here is that the equity providers do not receive fixed interest or do not receive a fixed income-like interest. And also, the equity providers are ranked after all others on liquidation. So their risk is slightly higher than the debt providers. And if the risk is higher, then they're looking for more return. And the return for equity providers is the cost for the business for raising equity finance. Now, I've done my best in the time available to go over the entire back part, and I hope that this uh, little video will be very useful for you while revising uh, for your exam. Uh, thank you very much, and good luck with your exam.